It is Monday, June 13th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is, of course, a Monday puzzle today, so we have a um, an approachable and solvable and not too large crossword for us to contend with today. And this um, not too large edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron, Christina, and as always, the inestimable hood monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign for directly supporting this channel. I do really uh, very much appreciate that. And if you'd like to join their ranks for a few pounds a month or the equivalents in your local currency, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there you can get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So please do enjoy that if that interests you. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video where you can also find a link to the Daily Solve Discord chat community. And um, there you can solve crosswords made by others who watch this series and also just chat about the New York Times crossword and other puzzles, Wordle and the like. All right, so... Um, also do subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed these videos. Thanks to everybody who has. And let's get on to the Monday puzzle. Uh, this is a crossword constructed by Huang King Vu and uh, Jessica Zetsman. Um, relatively, I think I think they've constructed they've collaborated once before. I, I think I remember their names paired. Um, each only responsible for a few New York Times crosswords. So um, not debut, but relative. Uh, relative newcomers, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, oh, and I see some shaded cells, actually. Look at this. So that's always very enticing to me. <laughs> Circled cells, shaded cells, I enjoy it. But let's just start solving as normal and see what happens. Like the path of a lob, arced. A lob would be a big, long, arced shot. Electrical adapter letters, perhaps ACDC. Alternating current and direct current. Authent if something is authentic, it could be real. And you're reading, you're reading one right now. I'm reading a clue right now, indeed. Nudged. Um, I don't know, egged on or something? Probably not. Instrument in a string quartet. No, it's cello. And here we have do's and don'ts. And applies sloppily as paint would be daubs it on. Oh, nudged would be elbowed to somebody. There we go. And this we've filled with crosses. Egyptian queen for short, Cleo for Cleopatra. And cries loudly is probably whales. Um, an assumed name would be an alias. And to, if something does stand the test of time, it does last. So that is our, our answer here. And big flaps in the fashion industry. <laughs> Lapels, I suppose, which are literally big flaps. And the question mark there uh, lets us know that we're, this is meant to be slightly punny. Um, so instead of a big flap, a big controversy or something. We are literally referring to large flaps on clothing. Blueprint detail could be a spec, a specification. And Silicon Valley field would be tech, of course, technology. Although what is this? Ah, yes, okay. Uh, French Peak would be Alp, so this is just the Alps, but an Alp in French with an E on the end. And what is this? Data graphics with wedges are pie charts. Oh, I, sorry, it didn't occur to me to look at the, oh yes, so here we have, ah, here we have clubs, here we have hearts, and presumably we are going to have the two other suits. So these are what, sort of broken suits or shifted suits? There's going to be something, something like that. Anyway, this one will be spades. And this one will be diamonds, because uh, that's what they must be in order to fit. So what is the what? Is, this is just spa. Yes, Hot Springs Resort is simply a spa. So we could go ahead and and uh, clue is complete. All right. So we'll get a revealer at some point that will explain what's going on here. How you might walk through the graveyard at night, stealthily or quietly or I don't know. Fearfully, perhaps? I'm not really sure what this wants. Probably ends with an L-Y, do we think? Does this... Yeah, maybe not. Ambulance specialists in brief. EMTs, emergency medical technicians, which I think was in the puzzle yesterday or the day before. Um, anyway, let's just keep going. The P of MPG is per miles per gallon. To have something for lunch is to eat it. 
Stethoscope users are, well, they could be DRs, doctors, or MDs, medical doctors, but it's probably DRs. Newspaper opinion piece is an op-ed. And blank far wherever you are, Celine Dion lyric. Um, it must be near, near far wherever you are. Oh, is that from the Titanic song? I think it might be. Um, this clue is almost, or this answer is almost complete. Stuck ashore as a whale is beached. The whale has been beached. Oh, I see. You might walk through the graveyard at night on a dare. That's funny. No wonder I didn't get that uncrossed. Present could be here. Present and accounted for, I'm here. A VIP is a big shot, a very important person. Dirty dozen eggs, raw eggs. Bad egg? Oh, bad eggs, perhaps. There we go. So the dozen, even though um, bad eggs and dirty dozen are not really talking about the same thing, the question mark is cluing us into, well, sorry, what I mean is bad eggs and the dirty dozen are both referring to sort of unsavory people. I guess what I meant was there's no reason bad eggs would have to be, uh, there wouldn't have to be a dozen of them, but we'll be included into the fact that we're using literal egg-related terminology here through the question mark to mix in with our metaphor. Anyway, air traffic control equipment is a radar, I would think. Adjusts as a clock is resets. To go to an event is to attend it. To make slightly wet is to dampen something. To do surgery is to operate on a patient. Spanish rice, rice dishes are paellas. Um, Ali Blank is a basketball play. Ali Oop, I recognize. India's smallest state is Goa, and 4.1 is a great one for short. It's GPA grade point average. Um, something sent by UPS, um, United Parcel Service, I think, is shipped. And shucks, only stronger would be, damn, a bit of light profanity. Uh, if something is existing in a hidden form, it's latent, such as a latent talent. And an appliance on a kitchen counter... Um, a toaster, right, sorry. So here we have Diana, princess played by Emma Corrin on The Crown. Okay, there we go, Princess Diana. Nuts used to make marzipan are almonds. And if one hopes one will do something, one aims to do it? Uh, to get rid of informally is to ditch, perhaps? I don't know, but let's check the crosses. Yeah, this looks okay. If you ask me online would be IMHO, in my humble opinion. And fiction's opposite is fact. Um, actor Neeson is Liam Neeson. And a believer in Islamic mysticism would be a Sufi. Islamic uh, type of Islamic mystic. And, oh, <laughs> appropriately enough, Ramadan observers would be Muslims. Okay, a numbered musical work would be an opus. Um, opus used in a more specific way in music than it, than it is just as a general word to refer to, to sort of catalog um, the works of a particular composer. So you might say Opus 7 or something is a particular piece of music by a particular composer. Spotted wildcats of the South American jungle are ocelots. And an organization that won't call to demand payments, despite what its imposters would have you believe. Yes, the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, will not call you to demand payments. So um, there have been many, many scams that take that form. Spoon blank fork. Spoon or a fork, I suppose someone might ask. Um, to confer upon somebody is to bestow something upon somebody, a reward, for instance, or a judgment. Uh and day and herd animal, the, in the, so the preferred to the Andes Mountains, would be an alpaca, sort of similar to llamas in some ways. And if one used a rotary phone, one dialed. Um, I don't know why that would necessarily need to be a rotary phone in order to dial it. You could dial any phone, but um, I suppose I suppose dial comes. Oops, I suppose dial does come from rotary phones because it is. It is circular. It is sort of it is literally a dial as opposed to a touch tone phone. But we still do refer to that as dialing. So anyway, light white powder would be talc. And if something is in a mass, it's clumped, presumably. Yes, crumple into a ball is to wad up. So there we go. Garments similar to rompers with a hint to the shaded squares in this puzzle. 
Oh, here we go. Jumpsuits. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't have ever landed on that. That's I don't think. But uh, without the the revealer. But here, anyway, here is our revealer. So the revealer being the central clue that ties the theme together. Central metaphorically, not literally in the puzzle. It'll occasionally it is centrally located, but not often. Um, and speaking of things that are not often, it is not often the case that the revealer falls to, sort of towards the western edge of the crossword grid as opposed to the eastern. It is more common, as predicted by Lyle's law, that it will be over here. Um, but that's fine. It is otherwise in its predicted place, which would be towards the southern border of the grid, and in fact, most commonly, precisely three squares north of that southern border. And anyway, it's just telling, it's, it's, it's just sort of explaining what's going on with the theme, which is that our shaded cells here are jump suits. They are suits that are jumping, literally. All right, a triangular sail is a jib on a sailing vessel. Land between Canada and Mexico is, of course, the United States of America, USA. Um, all vice presidents before Harris, before Kamala Harris, were men, obviously. And, well, I suppose that's not necessarily obvious if you don't know the American vice presidents, but that's probably easily enough assumed. Um, ah, that makes sense now would be IC. And Kings of Leon or Queens of the Stone Age um, is a band. And because this is an or clue, we are only referring to either one of them, so a singular answer. To fill to capacity would be to sate one's thirst, I guess, for instance. Um, lead in to correct or tune, autocorrect or autotune, or two uh, technologies, I suppose you could say. Um, excursion would be a trip. Um, if you finish something, you end it, so finishes or ends, which is what's about to happen with this crossword. Farmers harvest our crops. Malodorous would be fetid. And a three-point driving maneuver is a U-turn. No. No, is it a U-turn? No, it's not. It's a K-turn, sorry. I was going to say, it's funny, as I was filling in U-turn, I was about to say, well, U-turn doesn't have to be a three-point maneuver. You could make a clean U-turn. And in fact, that is what you could do. So I'd sort of entered this out without thinking. So a K-turn, a three-point turn that is represented by the shape of a letter K. I actually don't know that I knew that term, K-turn. But anyway, there we have it. That was the crossword, and that crossed with Colonel Sanders' chain, um, KFC. I think maybe no longer officially known as Kentucky Fried Chicken, although not because it's... <laughs> there's a sort of urban myth that that is because they're legally prohibited from using the term chicken because their chicken is not, in fact, sort of chicken, or it's not... It's sort of not up to chicken standards or something. But anyway, that's not actually true. That's just the sort of thing that people say. But I do think it is no longer officially called Kentucky Fried Chicken. I think that was because they wanted to promote their other food items as well. Anyway, that was that for the Monday puzzle. A nice, simple uh, Monday puzzle and a nice, simple Monday theme. I think that was an extremely smooth solving Monday puzzle. Let me know if you, if you agreed. Uh, we have had some Mondays in recent memory that have been a bit trickier than usual. I think this was this was right in line with uh, with a uh, with an approachable Monday target. And we had our clubs, our hearts, our spades, and our diamonds, our four jumpsuits. And uh, I suppose actually this can be added to the our list of themes that or set of themes rather that can be solved essentially without needing to worry about the theme. And indeed, that is even true when you get to the revealer, because the revealer has its own clue, garments similar to rompers. So you could simply solve that on its own as jumpsuits and never pay one bit of attention to the shaded cells. You could solve the puzzle without noticing them, and it would, it would validate correctly, as long as you solved the clues themselves properly. And... Um, and I think that's a perfectly uh, acceptable and appropriate way to construct a Monday theme. So well done to Huang Kim Vu and Jessica Zetsman for that one. And let me know how you, how you fared and how you felt about it. And now I am going to, uh, not solve, I'm going to read a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. And there actually weren't, there were many fewer than there were on the previous day, despite yesterday being a much larger grid. Uh, now, first of all, speaking of themes, Spikel Thing has a comment on an element of the theme that I seem to have perhaps missed. Uh, 
The comment reads, I think the theme today was a little more clever than it first appears. It is not just that it gives a word and then that word is then included in another clue, but each second clue also indicates that the word is repeated. One in, in the first of these. The answer and another thing states that there is, in fact, another thing. Two, this isn't my first rodeo is correct because it is the second instance of rodeo in the crossword. Three, the deja vu clue is more obvious. There are two deja vus as it's deja vu all over again. And four, baby one more time also lets you know that you need a second baby. That is, um, com you are completely correct. <laughs> and I feel, uh, I'm, ex it's, um, I'm extremely disappointed in myself that I did that I didn't observe and state that at the time because you're right that that makes the theme certainly more clever than it first appears and uh, and that's very very pleasing. I was certainly remiss in not observing that. So thank you, Spikel Thing, for uh, pointing that out because that was a great observation and a very nice element of the theme. And we had a, a few comments from people who uh, either noticed that or didn't notice that and had and had comments about it. Um, so yes, well done. Um, thank you very much for having pointed that out. And Echo says, I don't you ever don't think you ever um, worked out 82 across crib sheet user. Yes, I remember that clue crib sheet user. I don't remember ever go, I don't think I ever went back to it after it got solved through crosses. Anyway, as Echo says, it's referring to a baby who may sleep in a crib, thus using a crib's sheet to lie on. So there we go. A straightforward little pun. And Jacob Greenwood says, you are correct that the Sonics does refer to the former Seattle NBA franchise. They moved to Oklahoma City in 2008 and changed their name to the Thunder, as was stated in the clue. They are Oklahoma City's only major sports franchise. So thank you for that. And finally, Joe Zichterman has um, clues solved through the, the crosses. 99 down was, yep, you got me, which I don't remember actually even noticing. And the answer was guilty. So, yep, you got me, guilty. And I am, I indeed am guilty as charged of missing that answer. So thank you for pointing it out. And that's it. Those are the four uh, comments I had on yesterday's clues. So thank you to those who left them as usual. And thank you to you for watching this video to the end, as you apparently have done. Um, do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have been enjoying this. And oh, I haven't said this in maybe months. Uh, why not recommend it to a friend if you think you know somebody who might enjoy this uh, these solves. Um, you never know. Give it a shot. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday crossword, which will be another hopefully relatively approachable puzzle and theme. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.